Hello there, my name is Amotoya Siyoshinoa, and I'd like to welcome you back to my channel, Do It In God. Today I'll be speaking to you on the topic of contentment and its importance in the everyday life of a Christian. If we're going to face it and be honest with ourselves, this is something that every single one of us at some point or season in our lives that we've struggled with. I know that I have. I'll be honest and put myself on full blast first before I even share this topic with you guys. So if the topic of being content in your life's journey or finding tips on how to rise above comparing yourself to others is something that you've really been seeking the Lord about, then I definitely know that this video is for you and I encourage you to stay tuned. Okay, before we go deeper into this subject, I would like to start off with a question and of course give you an answer right off the bat. Why must I be content in God, you may ask yourself. Well, I say to you that it is very, very critical for you to be content in God because it is what will help you keep your joy and your peace and mind stayed on God. When you find yourself in a place of comparison or you find yourself in a place of dissatisfaction in your life's journey, it is inevitable that your joy will be stolen, your peace will be gone, and of course your mind cannot stay on God. And that is the desire of the enemy to keep you distracted by life's struggles, to keep you distracted by those minuscule things and make them appear as though they're bigger than the one thing, the one factor that is the ultimate, which is the God that you serve and the love and, and mindfulness that he has for you. Falling into the trap of discontentment can leave one in a state of being disconnected from God and ultimately feeling a spiritual drought. When we find ourselves looking at other people's accomplishments or success, um, before you begin to compare notes, before you begin to, you know, for the lack of words, covet what your neighbor has and fall into a place of being discontent and asking a million questions to God, it's very important that we pause and ask ourselves if we, first of all, willing to go through the process the person went through to get to where they were, two, if we really know what's really what really comes with a package or what we see on the outside because if we're going to be honest especially in this age and time of social media appearances can be deceiving right what you see is not necessarily what is and so it's very very critical that we don't find ourselves even wishing for what we actually think we want and what we want might not necessarily even be cut out to be what we think it is at the end of the day it makes no sense to ever your fellow human being. And I'm sure that if we look into the scriptures even deeper or even more, we'll find more reasons beyond even what I'm even stating right now as to why being discontent in God or finding ourselves comparing ourselves to others, you know, is dangerous. But this one alone is already enough meat for us to digest and for us to hold on to when it comes to a reason as to why we need to definitely, you know, shy away from being that way or living our lives that way. Now that I've addressed with you, the dangers of discontentment, let's go ahead and get into a few tips that I've come up with that I believe would help you to rise above on your life's journey whenever you do find yourself falling into this state. Number one, learn to embrace the path God has given you and accept that others would have their own. When you can do this, celebrating others will come easy. As it says in the book of Psalm 139, chapters 13 through 16 it says for you created me in my innermost being you knit me together in my mother's womb i praise you because i am fearfully and wonderfully made your works are wonderful i know that fully well my frame was not hidden from you when i was made in the secret place when i was woven together in the depths of the earth your eyes saw my unformed body and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Woo! That last verse. God already knows you. He knows what you need for the purpose he created you for. He knows what you need for the number of days he has already accounted that you're going to be on this earth. And that applies to every single one of us. So anybody you see operating or manifesting or living a certain way, accept that they are walking in their own life's journey or whether or not it's according to God's will or not, they are walking their own path and you need to walk yours and trust that God's got you and God knows what's best for you. And so we need to shift our focus away from looking at others and shift it right back to the person that fearfully and wonderfully made us in his image in his own purpose for his own glory in his own time tip number two 
Endeavor to look for the little breakthroughs in your day-to-day -day living and celebrate them. This one has been a big one for me. Like this has really helped me so much. You know, most of the time, whenever we find ourselves wanting to fall into the trap of being or feeling discontented or feeling unaccomplished, is because we're looking for this big win, right? This aha. But if we can just take a moment to take that big win and chop it down into little minor milestones, right? We would see that on a day-to-day -day basis, God is constantly giving us wins. God is come constantly giving us breakthroughs, but we don't take the time to celebrate those breakthroughs because they seem so minuscule in our eyes, right? And we're so focused on that big giant milestone. So always take a moment to celebrate the little blessings. If you're planning to have a house and you don't have a house here and you see everybody else having a house, take a moment to just say, you know what? Thank you, Jesus. This, this month, I was able to save a little bit more or I was able to maybe pay off a little bit more towards my debt and raise my credit score by two points, three points, whatever it is, those little things that you're doing that's, that's helping you get towards that goal, celebrate those milestones. Tip number three, never forget the journey. Remember how far God has brought you and continually use it as a reference point to encourage you on days you were tempted to compare and complain. This point right here is a bigger for me because um, I know that I've not had a chance to share my full story as to how God literally wrecked my life and picked me up and brought me close to him. And hopefully one day I will because it's so long, right? But when I think of my life sometimes and even where I'm currently at right now and, and the challenges I'm going through, because trust me, I am going through challenges. I think every single person will experience one of those in lives in different seasons and different phases. The one that is keeping me more grounded now in comparison to maybe four or five years ago is me now being able to reference back to some certain chapters in my life, right? Where I just knew that God was the only thing that I had and he was the only one that got me through. And when the enemy wants to bring those thoughts of me feeling defeated into my heart, you know, I have that to hold on to and say, nope, devil, you're a liar. God is real. The same God that did, did A, B, C, D, E, and X amount of years ago is able to do this again. And even if he doesn't do it, he still remains God. And my eyes and my heart will stay fixed on him because I know him to be true and I know him to be real. Tip number four, focus on your process. In the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4, 11 through 12, it says, And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, you should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders one and so that you will not be dependent on anybody two you know when you're focused on doing that it's really really it's going to be really hard for you to even see what somebody else is doing or what somebody else is achieving and somebody else's goals to the point where you find yourself feeling discontent right Focus on the, the assignment God has given to you. Focus on the process God has placed you in. And in that season that you're in, begin to hone in on your craft. Begin to hone in on whatever God is trying to teach you in that season. Set your mind, you know, on things above. Prepare your mind and your heart to receive that you may even begin to move further in your life's journey. You know, the part that I really love about this scripture is when, is when Apostle Paul mentions that, when you do this, your daily life will win the respect of outsiders. You know, when you are someone, when, when we find ourselves in a state of discontent, whether we realize it or not, it's not hard for those around us to see it. They may not necessarily tell us, but they see the attitude. They see the, 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 it oozes out pretty much. Let me just put it to you like that. It's not, it's not, you can't fake it. It's obvious. But when you have the joy and the peace of God and you're focused on your journey and you are walking in your calling and you are, like they say, drinking your water and minding your business, <laughs> it's not hard for folks to see either. And when they see you in that light, you will earn their respect. They will respect you, irrespective of your status, irrespective of how much you have in your bank account. They would respect you because there's something that is valuable in you being that person. The last tip I'm going to share with you is see the bigger picture. Check your intentions. Mm, what do I mean by this? This one was big. I left this as the last pointer to close off. What I mean by this is when you begin to find yourself being content, discontent, 
and you begin to find yourself comparing notes. What are your intentions? Where does your heart lie? That particular thing that you are desiring for that you have not received, why do you want that thing? What about looking at somebody else makes you feel like, okay, where is mine? What about this particular thing that you are striving for so much or you're desiring so much, invest in your eternity? Because if we're gonna be honest, eternity should be our major obsession. As a matter of fact, it should be our only obsession because everything that we have here, everything that we experience in here is temporary. No matter how high the magnitude of, status, the magnitude of status you reach would be, it's only gonna be temporary, right? No matter how much you become goals for others, it is temporary. So it's very critical that we see the bigger picture that this right here that we experience in here on earth is, it's only like a millisecond in comparison to eternity. I would like to read to you guys from the book of Philippians chapter two, verses three through eight. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests but each of you to the interest of others in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as christ jesus who being in very nature god did not consider equality with god something to be used to his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very human nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. I had read this scripture so many times, but I never caught the main meat of this scripture. We, we usually read this scripture with and we and we focus so much on how Christ abandoned his throne to step down here to die for humanity because he loved us so much. But the key thing here was Christ saw himself of no reputation. He thought himself of no reputation, even though he in eternity, in the spam, in the realm of eternity, he is God himself, right? He literally abandoned that to come to earth to fulfill what was required with the understanding that whatever he was gonna experience here on earth, was only temporary because he saw the bigger picture. Eternity was the obsession. Eternity was his focus. And while we may not know if we have 33 years, 40 years, 100 years, 65 years here on earth, it is critical that we emulate Christ himself because he is the principal example as to how we should live our lives. And we live with the understanding that we are only here for a season. And we focus on that with the mindset of knowing that eternity is what is paramount. Eternity is what is principle. The infamous saying by Theodore Roosevelt says, comparison is the thief of joy. Well, I did my own little spin on that quote and said, not only is comparison the thief of joy, it is also a seed that breeds ingratitude. Mm, it is a seed that breeds ingratitude in the sense that it shifts your mind and your heart away from what God has already done for you. And it keeps you from being able to be grateful for those things that God has done for you because now we are so you are so focused on what he has not done or what you think he needs to do for you. It is a trick. It's a very, very old trick of the enemy. Even back to the beginning of time, that was the trick he used to cause the fall of man. God had given man everything everything access to everything except one thing the tree of good and evil and the enemy final found a way to lure eve and ultimately adam to believe that they were lacking something from not having access to that one thing so the enemy revises his delivery and his techniques through the ages but at the end of the day his trick remains the same is to make us lose sight of what God has done and what God is doing and focus on what God has not done and make that bigger or more major than actually what God has done. 
And ultimately, that makes us or causes us to fall into a place of dissatisfaction in God, which ultimately would displease God and keep us disconnected from God. And that's pretty much it for today. I really hope this video has blessed you. If it has, please do not forget to leave me a comment below. I really want to know from this video, what is the one tip out of the five tips that I gave to you that you plan to implement in your daily life? Or what is the one tip that is your favorite? Let me know below. Also, do not hesitate to also leave additional comments or anywhere in this video, something that I may have said or shared with you that stood out to you. Let me know below. And of course, do not forget to hit the like button. And do not forget to share with your loved ones if this video has blessed you in any way, shape, or form. Like I always say, I may not have all the answers. I may not know it all, but I am glad I know the one that does, and that's Christ Jesus, and you can know him too. Until next time, it's your girl Toya C. Sunny now for now. Blessings and love. Bye-bye.